What's your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life. Deep connection, lights a spark. It's like you know me in the depths of my heart. We're dreamers. Brandy here. We are back. So exciting. All right, you guys, I'm just going to do a quick introduction in case you are just joining us live. I'm Brandy Mahon, the creative owner of Stamp Me Some Love, the um, owner of Stamp Me Some Love blog, uh, the store, the academy, the whole works. I also am the host of the Cardmaker Success Summit and the course creator of Craft Biz in a Box. Super excited to see you guys today. We have lots of stuff going on and I want to make sure that everybody is registered for the giveaway. We're going to be bringing on Sharon Ware from Prickly Pear Stamp Soon and after her presentation we're going to be giving away some awesome giveaways. So be sure to register. Just remember that this is only valid for folks inside the United States but if you live outside and have a good friend in the United States have them register for you and then agree to mail your goodies if you win. It's all based on your IP address. So you can't trick the system. It won't let you register if you're outside of the United States. All right, well, without further ado, um, Harry, if you can take uh, the promo code down for Stamp Me Some Love and then uh, put up uh, Prickly Pears, that would be awesome. All right, okay, Sharon, are you ready to come on stage? Give me a big thumbs up. Yay, okay, all right, here we go. There we go. We've got Sharon Ware in the house. Woo -woo. Hi, Brandy. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to have you on. Um, you guys may not know this, but Sharon's uh, store is like, what, two hours, one hour away from me, located Something in like the that, yeah. Yes, and uh, Sharon and I got to meet each other in person uh, over lunch with her lovely husband. It was so much fun, and we've been kind of business besties ever since. So, so excited that you are here. Thank you. 
Yeah. All right. So we've got um, Prickly Pear Stamps. Uh, their promo code is on the screen right now, if I'm not mistaken. Waiting for it to pass by. Yes, there we go. Uh, make sure you go and shop through that link and use the promo code CMSS20 to get 20% off the entire store. That's a really great deal, Sharon. And thank you so much for sharing that with our audience. You are so welcome. All right. So as I mentioned before, we've got about 45 minutes to do some demonstrations. And I'm so excited to see what you've got in store for us. I'm going to make you solo. So you have okay. got the stage, my friend. OK, thank you, Brandy, for having me. This is my absolute first live. So I am excited to be here. Um, the first thing that I'd like to just tell you that our studio and our office and warehouse is on the main road. And so it's possible that you may hear some cars going by, trucks, motorcycles, we just don't know. Um, and if you do, I'm so sorry, I've got a, a, a screen up, I've got blankets over the screen, I've tried my very best to make it as soundproof as possible, but there may be a little roar every now and then. And then way off in the distance on the other side, there's a train. So I'm just well, hoping that- It's if, okay, Sharon, because <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, my wife decided to entertain people in the pool in the backyard, which usually means dog barking, so it is all good. We love that you're here live, and I'm so excited that you decided to take this opportunity to do your first live. So everybody, give a big hands up for Sharon doing her first live. And we all know how scary that is, so let's show her some love. Thank you. All right. Um, we are going to have, we're gonna see two cards today. So Brandy, can you switch the camera down to the desktop? Or is that something I need to do? That is something you need to do. If you'll go into the settings and then yep. choose camera and then choose whichever camera you want to um, show. There, there we go. go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. Um, and with this um, particular screen view, I can't see your questions too well. So if you have any questions, Brandy, if you can help me field those, I would appreciate it. And I'll be glad to answer any questions as I go along. Absolutely. I kind of was thinking about what to show you today, and I'm a pretty ordinary stamper. I, I don't have any degrees in art, and uh, I have loved art ever since I was a kid. And so I've got all kinds of scrapbooks that I've done ever since I was in grade school. And I've won some state awards for scrapbooking, and um, I just love to, to, to craft. Let me tell you just a one minute intro to Prickly Pear, if you aren't familiar with Prickly Pear stamps. The company itself was founded in 2003, so it's 19 years old. And John and I acquired the company in 2019. So we've had the company now for three years. We are absolutely having a ball. And since that time, we have introduced some new colors. We have blue for our stamp packages and purple for our dye packages. Purple and blue are my favorite colors and my wardrobe even is made up mostly of blues. And so I really like those colors. We have an updated website, we have an updated logo, and we have lots and lots of new designs. One of the things that we love to do is we love to discover new artists and local artists. And I've got a story to tell you about the second card that we'll be looking at a little bit later. But we also have some very, very talented young artists. Um, when I say young, I'm talking 20s and 30s because I'm, I'm a little bit older than that. But uh, these artists are just great. And so we hope that you enjoy the designs as much as we do. We work with them and critique their, their designs until they're just like what we like. So the very first thing uh, that I wanted to talk, to talk about today was the beauty of imperfection. And that hey, is Sharon. Yes. Can you uh, switch your camera to your face if we're just talking that way? Oh. Um, yeah. Okay. There we go. That looks okay. better. Okay. So um, the, the one thing that I'm, I have always been is a perfectionist. And a lot of times with my, um, my crafting in that, it's not perfect. And one of the reasons that it's not is because uh, I have some pretty crooked fingers and that's where I was gonna put my hands here and just show you. So my fingers sometimes have minds of their own and they go one way when I want them to go another. So 
um, the beauty of imperfection. So I want to just assure you that if you struggle with any kind of issues like arthritis in your hands like I do, I also have some shaky hands. They shake sometimes when I don't want them to. And one of the things I use, the tools uh, that I use, is a little bit of a bean bag. And that helps me sometimes, especially taking the pressure off my wrist. So you can see that sometimes my hands shake like that. I also have just a little pad here that I got at a craft fair one time, and that helps just a little bit of a an elevation there. So I have discovered some unusual things, um, kind of workarounds from the normal type of tools. And I want to talk about those today. And the first card that we're going to look at is our sketched floral. And this is our lavender. It's brand new, and it has been a real success. And so I'm going to hold this up so you can see it just a little bit. We're going to talk today about how to make this really soft look. And I like to call it an ethereal look. Sometimes when we're on the farm, we live on a 42 acre farm here in Kentucky. And sometimes it, uh, when you wake up in the morning, the, the fields and everything, there's a fog over them and they just look ethereal. And I love that softness. So that's what I've incorporated in this card here. Again, we've got the prickly pear um, lavender stamp and the die. The die cuts all the way around the stamp and it has a stitched uh, little tag in here that with the, the word lavender exactly fits there. Now what I'm gonna be doing today is making a five and a half inch square cart. It fits perfectly in a six inch square envelope. And I've got the size of the card uh, layers here, if you can read that. I hope you can. And if you can't, just uh, send me an email and I'll be glad to send you that list. So one of the tools that I use is the Misty. And I know that with this, you're getting a little bit of a glare here and there's overhead lighting here and there's just nothing right now that I can do with that. So we're gonna open up the Misty and I have my canvas here that I have already pre-cut and it is a canvas size is a five inch square. Now, one of um, my favorite things to do is to, um, we're going to ink up our stamp over here. Hey, Sharon. Yeah, yeah. 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 There, there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked at the screen and saw that too. So my first pass on the ink is just going to be with black. And I'm using a hybrid ink pad, and that means it works well with your uh, watercolors as well as your others. And so the very first thing I did was I didn't position it, my card right. So we're gonna just fix that. I'm sorry, I should have actually had this part of it already done. But we wanna make sure that the top is shown on the card. The bottom, the stamp is actually a little bit longer than five and a half inches. It's perfect for your slimline cards or your larger cards. It's a big, bold print. Another tool that I use is a wood block. And I have a friend that her husband is a wood crafter. And so I got with Tim and I said, hey, I need something where I can press with my hands that doesn't cause me so much pain. So he crafted me these blocks. We have them in our store now. They've got a beautiful, high-quality piece of felt, and it just slides right over the image. They're in very, um, I don't have a whole lot of them in the store, so if you like this idea, be sure and jump over and grab that. Now, you'll see here that all of it did not go exactly right. It's a really light color there. So that's, um, I intended it to be that way, and of course, we could just pass another black over it a couple of times. But I like to take the little cubes and I'm going to just ink up, put some green on the stem area, and you'll see how great that works. We're going to close our misty, wrap our black block over it again, and, and now we've picked up the stems in the green. We're going to do the same thing with the um, the lavender spikes with a purple ink, keeping in mind that we've already laid down a layer of black. And what this does is it starts to give us some layers of color without having too much coloring to do. 
So you'll see here that some of the layers are a little bit darker up here, lighter down here, and that is perfect. All right. I did not have a light lavender marker. I went to use it the other day and it had dried out. So we are improvising. I am a big proponent of using what you have. So we're going to use just a really pretty lavender ink pad. And now for the my trick tool. This is just a Q-tip. I love working with Q-tips. So again, you can use a, a blending brush and I have those in all different sizes, just like most of you do now. But there's just something magical about what this Q-tip will do. So I'm laying down just some really, really soft shades here on the spikes. And I'm just simply pulling down some color. I'm not worrying too much about staying in lines and coloring. And you'll see why a little bit later. But we're just going to start here with a very, very light shade. And you'll see that I'm having to hold my hand just a little bit because it's um, having one of those mornings. And I don't know whether that's, you know, jitters <laughs> or whether it's just kind of my normal day. But You're anyway. doing awesome, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> In any case, we work around whatever challenges that you've got. So do you have any challenges that you are working with? And if you do, just put them in the comments and let us know how you overcome some of those challenges. We've got lots of folks commenting on the Q-tip idea. They are loving it. Yes. And now you'll notice that sometimes the Q-tip will become frayed. And when it does, or if you want to change colors, you just simply pull that first layer off and then you can just twist it back down and you've got a brand new tip there that you can work with. Okay, so now we've laid down our first very soft layer of color. And now we're going to take a little bit darker color. And we're going to come in and also just, just dab. Not nearly as much, but you can just dab it a little bit like that. There we go. It just took a little bit harder punch on that one. Another thing that I love to do, especially with florals, is I love to have a little bit of a sun-kissed background. And what I mean by that is we have the, um, here we go, we have the dye, like I mentioned, that cuts all around the shape here. So I, I took it and I stamped an image and then I cut it out with our dye. So I'm going to lay that masking right down over top. And I usually do this first, and I got ahead of myself just a little bit here. But we're going to mask off our flower. And I have, uh, again, I did not have a really pretty yellow um, ink pad. So what I'm going to use is a Copic yellow. This is a number Y11. And here is another one of my tips that I love, and that is working with makeup sponges. So this is just a little tiny sponge. I love the, the sharpness of the edges because it helps you to get right down into the little crevices that you need. Sometimes, um, and again, I have the blending brushes and I use those as well. But what I want to do is I just want to go all the way around the spikes of the lavender and I'm going to hold my Copic like this. And we're just going to rub a little bit around it. And this gives it that sun-kissed softness, like you're just looking at the lavender through the sun. And make sure that it's taped down. Sharon, I think you're inspiring a whole group of uh, folks who also struggle with things like MS, and arthritis and they're they're all commenting about how they just sort of craft through it 
Yep, absolutely. A lot of people have pain in their hands as well. I'm fortunate that I don't, but um, our cousin works, my cousin works with us here at the shop and she struggles with that a lot. Okay, so now we have just this really pretty sun-kissed look back here, like the sun is shining through. And if you wanna just come in just a little bit down here at the bottom, you can do that as well. And while I had the mask on, we're gonna put that back on. In, in here in uh, Kentucky, we have absolutely the most beautiful sunsets like ever. I've lived in three or four or five different states and I've never seen anything like the sunsets here. So one of the things I like to do for the sky is just to take a cube like this and I like to just kiss the paper really, really lightly. And we're gonna take it off of the magnets here and just with some pinks, and um, I always make sure that I cap it because if I don't, it spills over on the other side and gets whatever I'm working on in a mess. So we're just gonna kiss it with a little bit of color in the sky. And then because I don't have a really pale shade of blue in my cubes, I've got some bright ones. But here again, we're gonna take our handy dandy marker and we're gonna take our makeup sponge and we're going to just color a little bit of the makeup sponge and I'm moving my hand the other way. Now to start with, I wanna make sure that I, I push it over this way and I'm softening up the sky here with just some beautiful little wisps of blue. How pretty is that? All right, can you see that? Okay, and we have the grass here. So what I like to do with the grass is I'll take a green cube and then we're just gonna a little kiss here and there for your grass for some wispiness. And I've got actually two shades of green. So just a little bit of darkness here. And there you've got your base that gives you your grass. Okay. So we're building up the different layers here and the softness. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna continue. Um, I've got a green Copic marker here. And I've always just been, a, I guess what you would call instead of a bottle baby, I'm a brush baby. I love the brush end. And I very seldom ever used the um, chisel end. But in this case, where we have all of these spiky um, stems, the chisel end is, is solid and it doesn't move on you like the uh, brush end does. So the chisel end is actually really perfect for just uh, touching and these uh, long skinny stems and you can just lightly touch it like that and bring it down uh, with your marker. A fine point marker also works great, and I've got some of those. Also, your um, gel pens, if you have a gel pen or a pencil, that would work too with these long spikes. In addition to that, I'm just going to touch up here randomly, and I'm not being too careful with where I do it, but we're just going to kind of uh, add a little bit of green to our leaves and these petals. They are so beautiful because it doesn't matter whether you color the petal purple or whether you color it green for a leaf. It just, it all in the end, it blends in perfectly. And again, my hand is shaking just a little bit here, but that's okay. Okay. And finishing up, I'm going to take some purple here. I love to just uh, touch the sides of the card and let me grab this to steady my hand a little bit. So we're just going to touch the sides of the card here and give it a little bit more depth and it will show up when we go to mat it better. I've got my card with two of the corners 
um, round it off. I think that just adds a little bit of dimension to it. And I'm going to kiss the bottom of the card here with a little bit of green. Now, if we wanted to, we could take our green marker. I've got another color here of green. And you could just take your brush end. And if you hold your marker way out on the edge here, it lightens up your touch. And you can simply just uh, swoosh some extra green down at the bottom here with your and then turn it and go the other way just we've got some grass that's just kind of laying down there at the bottom now one of my favorite things that i have discovered here recently is the white gel pen if you don't have a white gel pen oh my goodness I bought these off of Amazon and I know Brandy has some links to Amazon. So use one of her Amazon links and go find these gel pens. They're made by Sakura and um, there's three different, what I found was three different sizes and I'm missing the, the 10, but it came in a five and an eight and a 10 millimeter. So I'm going to just take the eight millimeter and here's where some softness comes in and you don't have to be like particular with this. So I'm just gonna start here at the top of my, my spikiness and I'm coming down in circles like this. And this actually just layers a little bit of, of a white over top of it. And again, that just adds to the ethereal look, which I so love. And that's the look we're going for on this card. Soft, delicate, beautiful. You could have added a little bit of blue into these spikes of the lavender. And I was looking at my Copic pins and I didn't have uh, too many different shades of purple. So I, on one of my cards, I actually took a pink, laid that down first, and then I took a blue and laid that down over top of it. And I made my own shade of purple. So use what you have and be creative with all your different tools that you use. And you'll see that you will enjoy your crafting much more and not be so hard on yourself. So in putting the card together, this particular, particular card is one that I had already made. And we've got some that I've practiced with. But I have chosen just a blue matting. And this is going to be the middle frame. So this mat or this frame is five and a quarter inches square. Our canvas goes perfectly on that. And I love the one eighth inch border here. And then we have uh, the largest frame is five and a half inches. Now you can either round your corner like I did there or not as I did on the largest frame. And then the card base is um, just a uh, five and a half inch square as well. So the card base that I use is a Nina White in a 110 pound weight. That works well for me. Now, if you're a person that doesn't necessarily have to have everything squared up, uh, you could offset this a little bit like this for a little bit more interest. And of course, we have to have a little bit of bling. And you can use whatever you'd like. I have these, these pieces of... Um, embellishments here that work pretty this card you'll see the one that i made earlier has got a quarter inch frame around it border around it and the one we made today has a one eighth inch so if you do a one eighth inch you're going to start with your base being five and a half the largest frame uh, just goes exactly right over the base it's five and a half our middle frame then is five and a quarter. We bounce down a quarter of an inch with each time that we go down. And then the canvas that we're working on today is five inches. Which one do you like the best? Do you like your quarter inch frame or your one eighth inch frame? Or is there something else that you like? And you'll see on this one here, I've taken a little bit more time than I had today. And I took a, a I have a dark purple Copic marker here. And I actually dotted uh, some of the really dark purple before I laid on my white gel. And I've also done a little bit more at the bottom here with the grasses. Any way you make it, it's gonna be beautiful. Alrighty, that finishes up our lavender card and we're going to um, move over 
to another card that I wanted to show you really quickly. And we're not going to actually be constructing this card. We're just going to be talking about it a little bit. If you read my bio on Brandy's page, um, and I apologize that I don't, my um, computer is is making all the noises, but um, when I muted it. I, th I think that's um, all the sales coming in. <laughs> oh, well, hey. <laughs> We love that. Let come on, let it do, let it happen, then, huh? <laughs> Celebrate we're with fine. me. We are fine with those dings. We are yes, okay, okay with it. Dings are good. Okay, all right. So, I told uh, if you read my bio, you saw that um, I'm going to switch my camera back here as I talk for just a couple of minutes. Yeah, go for it. You saw that um, I love to write poetry, and so the morning that. Uh, about a year ago, I was going to a craft fair, a little local craft fair where everybody sets up their booths and everything out in a parking lot of a store. And um, I went with a girlfriend. But that morning before I did, I woke up and I had a poem. So I jumped up and I, re I wrote the poem down. And then I went on to the, um, the craft fair. So I'm going to read. I actually have two poems today. So I'm going to read really quickly so that we can get into the card. But I, I want to share this with you because it's kind of... Um, important with the card that I'm going to show you. So here's a poem that started. While in the garden standing there, flowers surround me everywhere. A cardinal perched on the limb of a tree sings the sweetest song meant just for me. The song wafts slowly through spring's gentle breeze. I pause to listen with the flowers and the trees. It's a beautiful morning, the song seems to say. Take time to enjoy this minute, this day. Before you know it, time quickly goes by. It leaves you to wonder the how and the why. Before you know it, you'll wake one day looking back on your life. And what will you say? Will you hold memories close what you did on this day? Will it make a difference in some large or small way? Will you take that time to pause and to rest, to read and to nap and relax and refresh? Will the memory make you smile when you think of the bird, of his song in the garden, the sweet song that you heard? Of the joy of the moment when he sang just to you, that moment in the garden amidst morning's fresh dew. So there you have my first poem, and that kind of set the tone for the day. So I went on to the craft fair, and the very first thing I saw was this absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to put the camera back down now. This absolutely gorgeous, yes, cardinal <laughs> on an old wooden barn piece of plank. And so it just seemed pretty serendipitous. And so, of course, I had to buy it. Isn't it pretty? It's just pretty beat up and plain, but she's made it into something beautiful. And that inspired me because we look at things all the time and we think, ah, oh, you know, but here she's just taken a very plain piece of wood and made it into beauty. Like we can do with our cards and our hands and things that are just not perfect. So I went on around that, uh, that day and talked to several different people. But one of the, pe the people that I met was an artist. And guess what she had? She had a drawing of a cardinal. And so I loved the way that her drawings were and her husband was um, a graphic designer. So we met for lunch that week and we talked and I purchased some of her drawings and her husband, she did just watercolors. So her husband took them and took them to Photoshop, made them into perfect drawings that we could use for stamps. And so the next set that we're gonna show you is called All About You Cardinal. And let me switch back here. Okay. And we're just going to talk about this. I'm not going to actually show you step by step. But this is uh, All About You Cardinal. And I love it because it is just, everybody knows, you know, the, the symbolism behind the cardinal. It has to do with memories of a loved one that's, that's passed on. Sharon? So, Yes. Can you can you take it out of the package? Uh, yes, I can. Yeah, that cellophane is really causing a glare. I am so sorry. That's okay. Yep. Yeah. It still has. Uh, it's on the cellophane, of course. But That's okay. That's yeah. Well, yeah, That's it'll work. There we uh, go. That better? Yeah. There we. Go. Okay. So we have um, the sentiments on this revolve all around the word you. You as a stamp by itself. And so we have thankful for you, thinking of you, missing or miss you. Uh, thank you. You are loved. Um, can't wait to see you. So happy for you. 
And then we also have the word both and all. So you can combine all of that. So, so happy for you both, thinking of you all and so forth. So this is all about you, Cardinal, and this is our CLR 270. And we have, I've got some cards also to show you. Um, here is, uh, we've got a wood grain background that goes perfectly with that. And our design team is an absolutely amazing design team. We've got six and, um, and they do a great job. This is uh, just a, a slim mini and the slim minis are popular right now as are the slim line cards. Here, one of our design team members actually made it into a bluebird and she's added a little bit of white here uh, for snow and um, it looks and then Merry Christmas is her own sentiment. So that's really pretty. We have the thinking of you. Here is a tag. When it's got some some braised here, she's done some embossing on the back. Another one thinking of you. Another slimline mini. Cute, cute. And here's another one that I made. You are loved. But the one we're going to be talking about today is this one. And um, I've got the sizes for the card base here that you might want. So on this one, our card base is five and a half inches tall by four and a half inches wide. The largest frame uh, is five and a quarter by four. The side strip is five by one, and the canvas that I worked on is four by three and a quarter. Again, if you want those uh, specific dimensions, or you can just, they don't have to be exact. But the way I made this card was I started with the canvas here, stamped the image, of course, in my ink. And one of the things that I wanted to let you know is that Quickly Pair, we sell the Misty in our store. We also have the uh, grid pads. We have the extra magnets. If you're in need of an extra magnet, we've got a few of those left. So if you need those, jump over quickly and get them. But we also sell these beautiful, absolutely beautiful Karen markers. Now you may have heard them called Karen and some people do call them Karen and that's fine. I happen to call them Karen, but that doesn't mean that I'm right. Um, so what I did is I simply, these are watercolors and I took uh, just a, an acrylic block here and I started with the lightest shade and I just swished some, this is watercolor ink, swished that in five different shades down my acrylic block. I hit it with a little bit of a Mr. Water here. And then I took uh, my, my uh, watercolor brush, which I'm looking for and don't see. There's one of them. So I started with the lightest shade here and simply just laid that on first in a very light motion. And then I took the next color and laid that on and I layered and layered and layered until I came with the very last one. And then I did a little bit of a dry brush on that. So just barely touched the ink here and with a very small brush, just very lightly did a dry rub on this. And you'll see, I don't know if you can, the camera picks it up well, but you can see that it really made a beautiful bark on the tree. And of course we used the smallest brush for the little limbs out this way. I chose to use just a blue green instead of a true green. And I love the way that that just is soft again. I added some of our gel pen strokes, as you can see here on the roof. And I outlined the little black area right here. So that helps to show his, uh, his breast. And then I came down here and I colored out of the line. And that's one of the things that we talk about what happens, you know, when my hand shakes and it's not supposed to. So I decided that we needed to cover that up with an embellishment and that worked well. So we know that on my canvas here at that time, I just had the red robin and we know that things are supposed to be in threes for odd numbers. So we pulled out, uh, I pulled out a red heart here. So now I have two and I needed another one up here. And I thought that up here for the word love, the little red heart embellishment went great. 
when I was trying to figure out another strip of red. So I'm counting all of these little three here as just one. So that's one, one swipe of red. The ribbon is two. And so I was looking for a third element of red to pull in on the card. And I found this beautiful polka dot, red and white polka dot um, ribbon. And so we added that in an angle. I popped it up, as you can see here, with you are loved. And I popped up the canvas right here that I worked with. I did a little embossing on the back uh, frame here and then also on the strip. And then I added it on a brown card. The brown pulls in, of course, all of the different browns from the birdhouse and the tree. So before we wind up, that's that's you are loved or all about you, Cardinal. Before we wind up uh, this week, I told you that this is my first time and with uh, Brandy and with Alive. And so I've been a little anxious and that's okay. Sometimes anxious is good. And so I, um, I, I actually wrote another poem. Here we go. I was looking for it. I'm sorry. All right. So another poem came to me and I have a, um, a chime that's out in the holly tree out in front of the front porch. And it just seems like that's my connection with my mom. My mom passed away back uh, in 07. So she's been gone a while. That that little chime, wind chime can just uh, all of a sudden start chiming and there's no uh, air anywhere, no breeze or anything. So it's I've connected it that that's how I can kind of converse with mom. So I was sitting out on the front porch and this poem came to me. And I want it to be the last thing that you hear from me because it was a real encouragement to me. And if you're struggling in any way with any crafting that you're doing, at any area in your life, uh, just listen to this poem. And I hope that it inspires you. So sitting on my front porch, looking out in front of me, a cardinal flew and landed in our stately holly tree. Singing out his familiar song for this audience of one, I listened and admired the tune. And then I looked up at the sun. I miss you, Mom, came quick to mind as I felt Mom's presence there. My gaze returned to that sweet bird, and I couldn't help but stare, and noted his excitement in the warmth of this new day. As the sun shone brightly on the bird, he had so much to say. To my delight, while sitting there, Mom's spirit spoke to mine. Her warm embrace, her spirit hug, so missed and so divine, Sitting in my comfy chair, her presence felt so near, her spirit voice familiar now, I leaned in close to hear. I'm proud of you, my sweet, sweet girl. You've come so very far. You love and laugh, you work and play. I watch you from the stars. There isn't anything too hard. Here's the key. So study, practice, learn. Apply new skills and before too long, new confidence you'll earn. Oh, thank you, Mom. Your encouragement is just what I needed to hear. Your sage advice was always great, and today it's so very clear. Thanks for stopping by to visit me and to share this beautiful view. Yours is the word I needed to hear as I start my day anew. My mind returned to the holly tree and to the handsome, bright red bird. The cardinal stared right back at me as if he'd also heard. Another song he sang to me, a nod. And then just like that, he flew up away toward the sun singing, I'll be back. So the key to this whole poem to me was just the phrase that study, practice, learn, and new confidence you'll earn. And so that's kind of been my motto for the day today that I knew once I got through the first one, the rest would be a piece of cake or be easier anyhow at least. And so I hope that you have enjoyed my presentation, learning to use what you have and learning to use maybe some unconventional tools like <laughs> Q-tips, there you go, and makeup sponges. And you may already have done that, I don't know. It may just seem new to me because it was. So I hope that you've enjoyed it and uh, we've got some giveaways here and we've got a promo code 20% off. We also wanted to just make sure you know that we carry the Corinne markers, the full set. You'll see them back here. And I had planned to show a whole bunch of new uh, cards and new releases that we have. And um, there just wasn't time. So we'll do it another time. I hope you enjoy. All right. Thanks, Brandy. Sharon, my t my eyes are full of tears right now. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your love. I had no idea that you did poetry and they um they're beautiful. Thank you. 
Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I lost my mother um, back in 2009. And um, yes, so I totally get it. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yep. All right, you guys. And the other thing, um, Sharon, is that um, after this video, gosh, my makeup is all going to get messed up. After this video, definitely go back and read all of the love that people have been um, writing for Thanks. you. So you want to take some time to look at that. Now, remember, we we posted it in three different places. So you'll have to go and look at the comments. In <laughs> yeah, you got places. me up to <laughs> Yes, I know, I know, I know. So, um, yes, yeah, so everybody go check out um prickly pear stamps um they she's got a beautiful line of floral stuff um she's got some really cute character character um type stamps um yeah. uh and i love that she supports uh local artists i think that she's got a connection with an art institute in um, north carolina if i'm not mistaken is that where it's at no it's savannah um oh, savannah, live, sorry mm -hmm. south carolina years in savannah yeah we live in um Savannah John was a fire chief there and we lived in uh, out toward the islands and yeah. we connected with some artists from Savannah College of Art and Design and the one that actually drew this one are spinach and Ramona frogs they are absolutely adorable but she just graduated from SCAD the Savannah College of Art and Design last week and so I hope she's watching so Katie if you see this spinach and Ramona <laughs> say hello <laughs> yes awesome so definitely um, go and check out everything that um, Sharon's got at her store. Uh, make sure you click through the link that is listed on the page or that's scrolling across the screen right now and use the um, promo code CMSS20 to get 20% off your entire purchase. And Sharon has not put any exclusions on there. So whatever she's got in stock, you know, you better take advantage of it because that's really awesome because she sells things that are not um, her products. And so yes. she's taking an even bigger cut on her profit for that. So it's definitely something that you want to take advantage of. That promo code um, goes until uh, 11 o'clock tomorrow yes. a.m. Sunday, um, June 5th. So go and um, uh, take advantage of that. All right. So let's do the the, the giveaway. Okay. And let me, let's see here. I'm going to go solo here. All right. And then let's um, cut over to my screen here. And so Sharon is actually going to be giving away um, how many gift certificates? Three, three gift certificates. But I just wanted to um, show you some of the products here. Um, we've got, of course, the Cardinals um, stamp set um, with that beautiful little um, birdhouse that she just talked about. We've got, um, uh, oops, that doesn't go there. We've got the lavender um, stamp set. And then something else that um, I wanted to show, she sent me. And, I, you know, Sharon, I haven't talked to you or this other person that I'm going to share with you. But this stamp set here, right here, I think you need to reach out to Tiffany Solera. Because she does a lot of uh, mixed media stuff with um, uh, butterflies. And she does lots of neat little script stuff with her um, art. So I think she's one of our speakers for one uh, for the uh, next summit. Reach out to her and see if she might be interested in doing a project with this. Because when I saw this, her name just sort of screamed at me. So anyway, okay. I just wanted to show you some things that um, that Sharon has. And I've got pretty much all of her floral stamps. They are just gorgeous. All right. So that's a little plug for Tiffany. And I hope that you guys can connect over that stamp set. Yeah. All right. So let's go and do the drawings. Let's see. We've got three gift certificates of $20. And uh, thank you, Harriet, for posting the um, giveaway registration link up there. And let's see here. Let's go back side by side. And let's pull the first winner's name. All right, so this is for the first gift, cer gift certificate of $20 for Prickly Pear Stamps. And this is going to go to Melanie. Last name starts with an F and ends with an R. All right, our next winner is going to go to Monette, M-O-N-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. Last name starts with a V and ends with an E. And then our last $20 gift certificate goes to Georgina. Last name starts with a C and ends with a Y. So that is what we've got 
for Prickly Pear. Thank you so much, Sharon, for sharing your very first live with us here <laughs> at Cardmakers Success Summit. And if um, I think you actually are going to be sponsoring the next event, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, awesome. Aaron yes. Reed is going to be doing the live though. Erin Reed is going to be doing it for us. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, so be sure to check out check out Prickly Pear at our next event, which is going to be in July. And uh, we are excited to see what's going to happen in July from Prickly Pear. All right, you guys. Now I'm going to go ahead and take Sharon out of the Thank show. you, everybody. Bye. Bye. All right. So we are um, at the end of this stream here, and I want to make sure that everybody goes to the schedule page. Um, Harriet, if you can um, splash that link up on the screen. I'm not sure if we have that as a banner or not, but it's very simple. It's cardmakersuccesssummit.com forward slash uh, schedule. <laughs> Had a little brain fart there for a second. And that's where you're going to find the links to get to the next presentation, which will happen at one o'clock Eastern uh, Standard Time or yeah, Eastern Daylight Time. We're in EDT now. And uh, that's basically an hour from now. We're going to take a break for lunch and come back with the stamps of life. We're going to have Stephanie Bernard in the house. So very excited about that. Make sure that you um, go to uh, cardmakersuccesssummit.com forward slash shop the demo day. And you can find all of the products that were mentioned in today's presentation, as well as the promo codes in case you missed it. All right, you guys, I'm going to sign off for now. I'm going to go head over and get some lunch. I hope to see you guys at one o'clock. Take care. Bye-bye.